In this system, an input displacement y of t is applied to the mass through a spring and a damper, and displacement of the mass as a result of that input is x of t. Note that y of t is applied to the mass through the spring and the damper, and there is also a coefficient of viscous friction between the mass and the sliding plane. We are interested in the transfer function between x and y output divided by the input, and to do that, we first need to find the equation of motion. Starting with the free body diagram, there are three forces acting on the mass. As we push on the spring on this side, the spring and the damper will push on the mass, which means that the force that the spring applies to the mass goes to the right, so does the force applied by that damper. The magnitude of the spring force is k times the relative displacement. Note that y will be greater than x, so we can write y minus x. The damper will also apply a force, which is now relative to the speed between x dot and y dot. So we have BD, the coefficient of viscous friction, times y dot minus x dot. And this friction here, the coefficient of viscous friction between the mass and the plane, will we slow down the mass as the mass moves to the right. That force will be applied to the left because it goes against motion. And the magnitude of that force is Bs, the coefficient of viscous friction, times the speed of the mass, x dot. We can now find the equation of motion by summing all these forces and equating that to m times x double dot, mass times acceleration. The sum of forces here will be k, and this is equal to mx double dot. This is in the time domain. We can now take the Laplace transform of this expression, and the Laplace transform gives k y becomes y of s, x becomes x of s, the derivative of x and y in the, in the frequency domain is simply the variable multiplied by s, so bs times y of s minus x of s. Same goes for bs, negative bs s, derivative of x of s. And this is equal to m times s squared, second derivative of x of s. We can now keep all y's of s on this side of the equation and move the uh, x of s's to the other side. So y of s multiplies k from here plus bs times s. And that's it. And this goes to the other side. Now everything else, we have x of s that multiplies ms squared plus k from here, negative goes to the other side, becomes positive, plus same here, bds, and plus bs times s. Now, the transfer function is defined as the output divided by the input, that is x over y. So x of s over y of s is, the numerator is bs, sbs plus k, and the denominator is ms squared plus, let's factor now all terms with s, s times bd plus bs plus k. And this is the transfer function of the system. By replacing the numerical values given in the problem, we can rewrite the transfer function numerically as shown here. Having the numerical values of the transfer function allows it to be written in the standard form. And the standard form for a second order transfer function is given as s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. This is the standard form 
in the denominator of the transfer function. There is no standard form for the numerator. To determine the natural frequency and the damping ratio, all we have to do now is to equate the coefficients of s, s squared, and s to the power of 0 to the numerical values we have. We see that a 1 multiplies s here, 1 multiplies s there. Here we have 1.55 that multiplies s, and here we have 2 zeta omega n. So we can now write that a 2 zeta omega n equals to 1.55. Omega n squared multiplies s to the power of 0. And 1.8 here multiplies s to the power of 0. So we have now omega n squared equals to 1.8, which gives omega n as 1.37 radians per second, the natural frequency of the undamped system. Replacing this value in the other equation we got here, we can find zeta as 1.55 divided by 2 times omega n, 1.37. The damping ratio is 0.57. Now, having a transfer function also allows us to specify the poles and zeros of that transfer function. The poles are defined as the values of s that will make the denominator zero. By doing s squared plus 1.55s plus 1.8 equals to zero, the values of s that satisfy this expression are the poles. And those are s1 equals to negative 0 0.75 plus 1.09j, a complex root, and S2, the complement of that, negative 1.9j. The real part is the same. So those are the poles. The zeros are the values of S that make the numerator zero. By doing 0 0.67s plus 1.8 equals to zero, and solving for S, we find the zero of the, this transfer function, which is negative 2.76. And this is the zero. Now let's assume that a unit displacement is applied to y of t. Say we, we move this side of the spring by one unit, one meter or one millimeter, and you're interested in the steady state value of x of t. The steady state value means the final value that x of t will reach once the position doesn't change over time. By applying a displacement at y of t, what we are actually applying to the system is a step input. If you plot the displacement y of t, and you are again pushing on the spring and damper here by one unit and holding that constant, we can plot this input as something that it goes from 0 to 1 millimeter or 1 meter and stays at that value as time goes to infinity. This clearly represents a step input. y of t equals to 1, y of s equals to 1 over s. This again means that we are applying a displacement of one unit to this side of the spring and damper and holding that a constant. And now we watch what happens to x of t. That's the response of the mass, that is the uh, displacement that results from this input. To find now x of t, we need to replace y of s here with the appropriate input and then solve for the inverse Laplace. We're not going to do that but because it will take some time, but what we can do is to find the final value. The final value of x of t can be now calculated by taking the limit when s tends to 0 of s times x of s, which gives the limit of s tending to 0 of s times x of s is now our function, 0.65s plus 1.8 divided by s squared plus 1.55s plus 
And this times the input y of s that it now moves to this side, and y of s is 1 over s. This s from the theorem cancels the step input. And when s tends to 0, we are left with 1 over 8, 1 1.8 divided by 1.8. The final value, or x, when t tends to infinity, is equal to 1. This is a very interesting result and very intuitive at the same time. This tells us that if we move the spring on this side by one millimeter or one unit, the mass will eventually also move by the same amount, by one. To go from zero to one, now the mass will follow a step response, and that step response will have sinusoidal and exponential components. Again, because if you look at the poles of our transfer function, they have both imaginary and exponential components. You can verify that by taking the inverse Laplace of this expression, of course, times 1 over s, which is the input to the system, manually, or just looking at the response using MATLAB. And you'll see that eventually the mass will reach 1, which is the same value that was applied at the input.